Clark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host here on the website that teaches you how to play the guitar, the banjo, but this week is all about mandolin, actually more than one mandolin. We're going to learn Cuckoo's Nest. I'm going to teach you two solos for the melody. They're pretty straightforward. We get into some triplets that are really fun. Um, and then I'm going to teach you a harmony, not just only how to play the harmony uh, break, but we're going to talk about how you go about finding harmony because that's one of the funnest things to do. And then you need to go grab a buddy and you need to Tell them to learn the harmony part, or you learn the harmony part, and y'all play this together. And if your buddy doesn't have a mandolin, then you probably need to find a new friend anyway. So if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Pit member, have access to hundreds of lessons and tabs. This is about a 30-minute lesson. You can download the tabs exactly as I played it for, um, for both solos including the harmony, and then I have three different speeds of rhythm MP3 tracks. I even have the rhythm or an MP3 with the harmony part and without it, so you can practice playing along with that. I'd be honored to have you on board. Let's jump right into this first solo for Cuckoo's Nest. Let's learn some Cuckoo's Nest. This is a really fun sounding tune. Um, you know, it's one of those fiddle tunes. It has that typical fiddle tune structure where, you know, it has an A part, and this A part will last eight measures. It sounds like this. you remember that part. Then it will repeat that. Then it goes into a B part and the chord progression changes just a little bit and it's got that little cool lick. And so it, that will be eight measures then it will repeat that. So we're going to learn a first solo for this which is pretty straightforward. Then we're going to introduce a second solo that has some triplets in it and also it has a harmony part to it as you heard so we'll talk about how to find that harmony as well as learn the notes. So let's go ahead and throw up the first line of tab here. Uh, you'll notice that I have your chords written above the measures, um, and then I have the little pick arrow directions written beneath each one of the notes. That's important uh, to pay attention to, especially as we get into those triplets. Now, this one's in the key of D, um, but it only has four chords. It starts on the D chord, and then in this A part, it's going to go to an A chord, then it's going to go to a C chord, which is interesting. That's a flat seven chord, and then to the G. So this is an interesting little formula, right? Because we have a D chord, then we go to the fifth chord in a D scale, which is an A. Then it's kind of like we reset in measure four on a C chord. And then we go to the, um, the fifth chord in a C scale, which is G. And so we're going to learn a lick here that goes from D to A. And then we're going to repeat that lick, but drop it a whole step so that it will go from C to G. And that's got a cool little feature to it. Let me just play and you'll hear what I'm talking about. Here's the lick. Now let's drop that whole lick down a whole step. You hear that? So that's, that's kind of cool. That's one thing that makes this song stand out. So as we walk into that first lick, we're just going to use some quarter notes here. Measure one. Just right up that D scale. As we get up to that D note there, measure two, it's going to hang out there for three Bs. So I wanted to vary it up a little bit. So we're just going to drop down and grab that open D string on the second beat just to reinforce that melody note and octave lower. Then we're going to walk down the scale. And then we're going to repeat that lick for the most part measures 
four and five. This time, when we get to measure four, we're on that C note, I'm not gonna jump down and grab the C note like we did. We could, but I'm gonna grab this E note here, second fret of the D string, uh, just to offer a, a little variety, and then come right back down going into measure five. Okay, so let me just play measures one through five for you. A little bit slower, and we'll play it much, much slower later on in the lesson. Now, as we get into measure six, here's what I want you to pay attention with the chord progression. We've got a measure and a half of D chord, okay? And it jumps to the G chord. They're halfway through measure seven. Then we have a measure of A and a measure of D. Those four measures there, that chord progression, is going to be the same in the A parts and the B parts. So the only difference that the A part and the B part makes in their chords um, is in the first four measures of each part. But the second four measures are the same. So measure six, we're just walking right down that scale. Then we have a, a big jump up to this kind of reset note up here, this G note. Then walk down again. So I think that's cool. We jump up to this G note and then play a lick back down to a G note right there. And then we just have what I call just a wrap up lick here in measure eight. And then there in measure nine, we finish with the first A part. Okay. So now we're going to walk into a second A part and I'm going to keep it, you know, really close to the melody again, but we're going to add a few eighth notes in here. Uh, just to make it a bit more interesting. Then the second solo will start adding triplets and different things like that. So here we are. We're gonna...